for us. Ready? We don't have it on your agenda, but are there any citizens comments? Hearing none, we'll go to CDC's discussion uh, for emergency funding of employees and my. Do you want me to summarize the memo or? Um, yeah, I think everyone's read it, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just summarized it. Okay. So um, there were three uh, initiatives that we ultimately decided on uh, to recommend, one of which uh, doesn't require any funding, and we've already implemented it, which is to try to get information to local businesses. We had a great webcast last Thursday. There weren't many local businesses in attendance, I think partly because, mostly because we didn't um, we didn't, didn't we didn't set the time the availability of people was only known the day before we could only get one posting in the listserv but um but we have it recorded and uh there was a lot of really helpful information including um importantly for something i think we're going to discuss the department of labor talking about the streamlined processes that they've set up for unemployment insurance um for uh for employees who lost wages including those who will lose wages in the future uh, out through um, 10 weeks, I believe, from the onset of so July. So basically through the end of September. Um, th I just want to emphasize that one point that that that, um, th that you do have to apply for regular uninsurance before you can be shifted over to disaster uninsurance. But that process only takes a couple of days. They've set up an expedited process. So it sounds like it's easier than some businesses thought it was going to be. and. Uh, that's information that we'll try to continue to kind of get that highlights of that inf of that webcast out into the community. The other two programs do require funding. The first is the marketing program. The benefit of the investments that we've made, I know you're all now expert at all the investments that we've made in the marketing platform, but the benefit of it is that literally as soon as we were able to write what the messaging was, and that took a few days with input from some businesses, as soon as we were able to write it, we were able to push a button and change the marketing. And we did that because that required no funding. We asked the marketing working group if they wanted, you know, what else they needed. And they came back to us with what we thought was a very modest request for an additional $5,000. That money will go towards paid advertising, basically increasing the number of people who see the messaging. We pay that most of our money doesn't go to that. In fact, very little of it goes to paid advertising, really only on a testing basis. Most of the money goes towards creating the content. And we have a fairly large base of people that we can send it to without having to pay for it. This simply expands that by a bit. So that's the five, that's really all there is to explain for the $5,000. It's the, the marketing messaging has already been changed. I've received some messages already, you know, it has a person on the list. <laughs> so that's happened. Can I ask a question on that? Yeah. Is there any way to track success of that or the lack of success of it? So the, the, we can't we cannot track a person who got a message and paid money to an inn or a restaurant. Um, uh, we can track um, we can track everything else, basically. But interaction I mean, they click on it, et cetera. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, we absolutely know the, yeah. so that we can it would be useful if you're interested offline, we've sort of summarized it in EDC meetings before, probably not at this maybe very briefly at the select board. Um, but the basic metrics uh, around the marketing campaign, the simple metrics, the open rate, the click-through rate, and so forth, are very high, much higher than average. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we, we are beginning to be able to track people who come to Woodstock because we give out. So we're, we're, able, we're, we're in some cases able to track whether someone has actually physically come to Woodstock. Okay. So we have as much tracking as can be, okay. can be done. So those are two of the, so marketing is the $5,000 request. The webcast has been done and we'll continue to sponsor, promote it. I mean, and there's a recording of it, by the way. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. And then the third one is a program for wage support for local employees, for employee, sorry, when we say local employees, for employees of local businesses, whether they live in Woodstock or not. Um, in our discussions, 
there are different ways of providing support to businesses. We could write checks to businesses. We could write checks to employees. We could, you know, I suppose market a lot more, spend a lot more on marketing, which helps, we think, every business. In the end, we decided we were very happy that the marketing group only asked us for a small amount of money because I think the sentiment really was that helping the employees was the best way to help the businesses. Um, and we got that feedback from the businesses as well. That I don't want to say there were a huge number of businesses that talked about it, but the, we, I, we spoke to probably eight or nine businesses over the course of either the meeting or just going around and talking to them. They, they all said that the number one priority was getting the word out that Woodstock was open for business. And by the way, we produced a couple of videos I, I, um, that are really good, 20 or 30 second videos that basically with people on the green talking about and pictures showing, it's obvious that you know there's people eating lunch under the umbrellas on the picnic table um, and under the phrase Vermont is open and Woodstock is open. Um, and we sent those actually to the state uh, for them to use if they'd like. They all end with the Woodstock logo and the Woodstock. Yeah, so um, in any event, so we think that the, the employee program was the, was the main emphasis once the marketing needs were satisfied. We are obviously concerned about the limited amount of money. The total request is $50,000. We are forecasting that by the end of December, the end of 2023, we will have about $50,000 unencumbered, and that's the $50,000 we're proposing. So in effect, we're, we are run out of money, which I think is a good thing, means we're, uh, we're spending the money that we're supposed to be spending. We, we will run out of money at the end of this year, which means that next year we can have a regular grant cycle. We'll just, you know, we will be spending the money that we receive in 2024 on the grants that we make in 2024. Um, technically, our, for those of you that go to the web site to look at our financial reports, which are online, it's showing a forecast of $63,000. I, I think that forecast, it's a formula that is automatically generated. I think it's a little bit high. There's no way to know. We, it, because the flood has, A, the year has slightly slowed, and then there was the flood. So, but I don't think if we're $10,000 or $15,000 off, we'll either have a little extra money at the end or we'll use some of next year's money. To pay. I think that the critical decisions were how much to offer and how long, how quickly to do it and um, who should make the payments and what's the easiest way to disperse the information to get the, get the funds out, I mean, to, to get the funds out quickly. And so what we settled on was um, a one week period because to try to move quickly, the town is able to make the payments if we keep it very simple. And in particular, if we keep it under $600, because then they don't have to do W2, W9s okay. or something. So that like triples the amount of work. Um, we are also, we think that there are 100 people or more who are eligible and we're worried about it. So we set the amounts low. This is a little bit, you know, right to your email that you sent. We set the amounts at $500 so that we could service 90 people at, at least. And then we had a second kind of tier. If, you know, if you've worked 12 hours or more, you get $250. And if you work 20 hours or more, you get 500. Um, we have a simple process. We will check with each. The, 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 the application is very simple. So there's what's your email address? How many hours did you lose work? And with the farmer's market in mind, because they are paying their people through August 12th, how many hours do you expect to lose by, before the end of September? If those numbers are greater than 12, sorry, the, and the first thing we wanted to do was to get the bigger hour people, their needs as met as much as we could. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take all the applicants for 20 hours or more, give them each $500, unless it adds up to more than 45,000, in which case we'll give them $450, whatever, we'll, we'll prorate the pool across them. And then we won't serve anyone else. If there's money left over, we'll do the same thing with the $250 people. And if there's money left over after that, we'll extend the one week and take another round of We, in terms of the timing, we wanted to do this all at once rather than rolling. Because if we do rolling, Ray applies, we give him 500, then Mary applies, we give him 500, and then Susan applies, we're out of money. So we wanted to give, we wanted to give everyone. So we'll, we'll announce it. The form is ready. We'll announce it today, but it won't appear. I think we can get it into the standard today. It won't appear in the listserv till tomorrow. So I think we'll probably set a deadline of a week from tomorrow. I mean, we can adjust, no. 
And then, and then we will take the list by company, go back to the employer, say, you know, Susan, your four employees said this. Is there any, do you have any problem with that? And then we will send the spreadsheet to the town and ask them to make the payments. And just a quick question. What about people who used vacation time? And so they, they technically, they got paid. Right. Now they may have to take an unpaid leave if they want some vacation. Yeah. Um, we did not consider that. So um, well, let me say that I think that that intersects that may intersect with the question, well, well, with the question of the in. Yeah. Because my understanding is that that, so uh, one issue that we were concerned about was whether because of the size of it, all of, you know, 80% of the money would go towards the in. There's nothing against the in. It's just, we felt that qualitatively, it seemed like if anyone could survive, the in could somehow survive this better than a small business, a smaller business. <laughs> Except not some of the employees. Understand, correct. Right. So we were trying. So we met with the inn. We had. We, they came to our meeting. We discussed, and then we had a separate meeting with the inn to try to work it out. What we came up with was this twelve hours and twenty hour split. The inn, but I believe there's a bit of a. There was a bit of a disconnect. Or the inn said that there were probably only thirty to forty people who worked half who, who worked half time or more who lost wages. And so we thought, well, 30 to 40 people, that's, if, if we have enough money for 90 people, that's a lot, but it's, you know, that's appropriate. And everything will get prorated down. If we have 120 people, everyone will get a little bit less. But they were, I think, talking about 30 to 40 people working half time Per week, which would be 20 hours per week. And we set the limits at 12 and 20 hours in total because we didn't want to have, like, if you had a, you know, if you worked 22 hours the first week and then took vacation or 18 hours the first week and then took vacation because you were planning not to be there or something, we didn't want to, we, the whole part of this is to be simple. We don't have a big processing facility. And by the way, we thought about a heavy processing, heavier processing process through the hub and Jill uh, and the hub team were willing to um, conduct the reimbursement process for us, which would have enabled them, I think, to ask more questions and to deal with subtleties the way they do normally. But that was gonna cost them and therefore us a fair bit because they have to pay, they have, to, they have costs that, that they incur. So we decided in the end to do it the simplest possible way, which means that the kind of subtleties about when are you taking, the, when did you incur the work the, the lost wages and so forth. We just said, you know what? It's two, it's not a, it's two hundred fifty and five hundred dollars, twelve and twenty hours. So sorry, that doesn't answer your, your question. Um, we did not consider vacation. Um, I think. Will you consider vacation? In well, the sense I, that if someone took like a Monday off, they had they lost a vacation day. That's between them and the employer. Right. But yeah, no, hundred dollars they made they get from us. Yeah, it's a lot. It's considered their, a lost wage. I. I yeah. Um. Okay. Here's what I'm just to run this by you, just as reasonable people or, uh, to advise. I am hesitant to make decisions on behalf of the whole EDC at a moment like this, mm -hmm. but there are basic principles that we set up. I think a lost vacation day is a lost wage. It's just in a different form. And so therefore, I feel comfortable saying that we would cover vacations because I think that was the we didn't use the word vacation, but you're certainly losing a dollar benefit that's exactly equal to the wage. So I think that that's a law. Are there any other EDC members that aren't on the call? I think that that is a reasonable uh, uh, interpretation of what we intend. And I, I think <clears throat> if the board feels that way, they can make the motion to approve it hypothetically. Subject Subject Correct. on the EDC approving the vacation thing. And Correct, it is. And I'm trying to avoid having you guys do more of our work. I would rather have that we would have thought of that specific question. But I think in this case, it's consistent with what we had felt, even if we hadn't articulated it. So, yes. Can I ask a follow-up? Sure. Um, would an employee who left a position in a Woodstock business and gone somewhere else 
potentially outside of Woodstock, would they be eligible for this as well? I think that the, I don't think that would be consistent. That would be inconsistent with what we talked about. The original purpose of this was to prevent defections. Yeah. It's now what happened in the interim is it took us a little while to design the program and the water shortage problem was fixed. So this is no longer really a defection prevention program since the people would have defected already. I mean, they're back at work, but we still felt that there was harm done and maybe it could cause future defections and so forth. So I, I would say the answer to that, that would not, that was not the spirit of what we talked about. So I would say no. They have to be current employees. And that would be what we would check with, that would be would check with the employer. That also falls under the businesses not wanting money themselves, but then money goes to the employees. You know, it's kind of, that matches up with that. So. Yeah. I will say that there was one, I did hear from one business owner who was physically, who was physically affected by, well, I heard from a number of business owners who were physically affected. Um, and one basically feeling really concerned that there wasn't going, that, that the process of getting money from SBA and um, and unemployment insurance and so forth was going to be very complicated and was quite concerned. Um, and we brought that issue up in the meeting and we considered a fourth initiative, which was a physical disaster relief fund and decided not to request funds for that. And I don't think that wasn't a pleasant decision or an easy one, but but I think we clearly considered that option. So, so that was the one case in which businesses would be asking for funds for themselves. But a number of the businesses who have suffered significant damage have not asked for funds and, and have actually asked for employee support. I don't know if that's too much detail or not enough, but. It? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> any questions? Harry, do you have any questions? Jill, Jeff, anyone? Harry? No. no. Okay. I will entertain a motion to approve the EDC funding uh, supporting local businesses affected by the flood and employees. I would. Uh, Move that we approve the funding of five thousand for marketing and the forty-five thousand for the employee wage support program. Second. Do you, can I just, do you want to do it with the vacation included or not? Yes. Oh yeah, with yes. the under or I guess with the understanding that yeah or, that the proposal could be amended to include vacation days. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. Thank you. And I just like to say, I like thank the EDC. They moved very quickly over the last few weeks. A lot of special meetings. They had a lot of people involved. Uh, so I just appreciate the efforts to help the residents yeah. and employees of Woodstock. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Eric, we'll be dumping this request on you in about eight seconds. Thank you. Send out a ton of checks. Uh, is, okay. there any, is there any other business? I just. Um, uh, no. No, I, I can't. No, thank you. Um, did you want to? No, we're all set with that a little too. Yeah. And then I will take a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? None. We're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Thanks, John. And? Thanks, John.